Be all you can be. Just do it. Nothing is impossible. Pay it forward. Live your dream. Positive thinking surrounds us. It's the language that we use in everyday life. It's the language that people use when they're trying to persuade us of something. And it all comes from one simple idea that bubbled up in American mystical subcultures in the mid-19th century. It was this. Thoughts are causative. When Ronald Reagan, for example, used to say in his speeches, nothing is impossible, that was not the kind of language that was always used in this country. That was language that came out of the positive thinking movement. When we talk about the importance of having a positive attitude, that way of thinking is new. The notion that you have to be able to foster a diplomatic atmosphere with other people seems like it's always been with us. It hasn't. That simple notion, that's the basic American belief system. The origins of positive thinking go back to mystical and occult subcultures in this country in the 1830s and 1840s. There were lots of Americans who were excited by an idea that was crossing the Atlantic from Europe to America called mesmerism. The principle of mesmerism was that you could go into some sort of a trance state and these invisible energies which a Viennese healer named Franz Anton Mesmer called animal magnetism. These invisible energies that control life could be manipulated. Well, Mesmer may have been incorrect about the existence of invisible ethereal fluid, but in his approach, he happened upon some of the earliest concepts of the subconscious mind. There was a movement called the Mental Cure, which sought in some ways to combine Mesmer's ideas with an early rough understanding of the subconscious mind. And people believed you could use your state of mind, you could use an appeal to God and your own sense of faith to heal the body. As the decades wore on, Americans like to innovate. They don't take an idea and just settle on it. They immediately start thinking about how that idea could be applied to other areas of life. If these methods work for health, can they work for other things? Success, money, problem solving in the outer world. And by the turn of the 20th century, as people were moving off farms and into cities, as the stock market was ramping up, as money could seem to come from out of the ether through securities and bonds and stocks, people became absolutely thrilled with this idea that the mind could have causative properties not only over the body, but over wealth. If you look at people's letters and diaries, people were not disappointed People were not naive, people were not misled. They felt that positive thinking principles in the early part of the 20th century gave them an ability to step into a broader life. And in 1952, a Protestant minister, Norman Vincent Peale, created the document that would bring positive thinking into just about every household in America. It was his famous book, The Power of Positive Thinking. That is a phrase that came to life in this country. Peale's book remains one of the great top-selling books of all time. It reprocessed positive thinking ideas through scriptural terms and language that the church going public could be comfortable with. Peel was very forthright about the influence that he received from new thought and positive thinking figures. The whole notion that the mind is causative is the most radical religious and psychological idea of our times. It's the impulse of many serious, sensitive people to want to dismiss positive thinking, and that impulse is understandable. The mistake of the positive thinking movement is that it has tried to argue this idea that we live under one basic mental law. We live under many laws. We suffer, we experience physical limitations, because there's no verifying the existence of one great mental super law. That does not mean, however, that all the insights of the positive thinking movement are wrong. The mind is one cause among many. So phrases like, just do it, believe in yourself, yes we can, I think I can, is a phrase that, at least at one time, every child grew up with. The positive thinking movement has always been on the edge of redefining humanity's view of itself. 
We are seeing ourselves as mental, physical, metaphysical, psychological actors. And many people are persuaded, and science does stand at the back of some of this, that our concepts of the mind have not been large enough.